Hey guys, what's up? You may or may not have seen our live just a couple hours ago. Of course, it'll be a bit before I put this video up. But we were showing you how we were installing our microwave over our stove, which you don't see our stove because we had to get in the wall. But I was just going to walk you through it. We Our live, we kind of had a few problems. We were trying to fish. We weren't successful at fishing. We were trying to fish the uh, power cable um, from up at the top down the wall and into our basement, which is where our box is, our electrical box. And we had a, had a couple little problems. Uh, the first problem we had was the fishing adventure itself was painful. And we tried a couple different ways. And then finally, the third third try, I tried it once. Tammy tried it the second time. Third try, I said, let me just try something. So we had a fish uh, tool, which you can buy these. We've got two of them, actually. Um, you attach your cable, your wire to that end by electrical tape. And then you can use this. It's rigid metal. You can use it to fish through the walls, which I'm not really good at that, but I guess I'll save that next time I need to clean a clog out of a drain. But no, it, it's very similar to a uh, snake that you use in a drain. Um, but I finally just said, hey, I, the, the issue we were having was the wall behind here is not another piece of drywall. There's not a four inch gap and then another piece of drywall. It would have been very, very simple because the wire going through would have hit the, the other piece of drywall behind this one and stayed in this little cavern, and we would have been able to get it. But the problem is, behind this is our, our uh, wood-burning stove behind this wall. And with the wood-burning stove being there, it is just an open cavern. Um, there's just open space. So when we were running the wire through there, in that wall... It was just going all over the place. So I finally decided to get a little creative. I just took the wire. That Romex cable is what they call it. Ours is 12-2 because we're running an appliance with it. I just kind of twisted it and bent it. It's kind of stiff because it's copper wire, but you can flex it and bend it. And I just bent it back the way I wanted it to come through the wall. And I just popped it down the wall. And we had this hole to guide ourselves. And then we had one way down at the bottom, which... You can barely see right in there. And it was really easy to get it here. And when I got it there, I just, I actually got creative and I used uh, grill tongs, stuck them through the hole, grabbed the cable, pulled it out, pulled it through this hole. And once I got it pulled through that hole, I pulled enough through so I wouldn't have to feed this this whole distance again. And then all I did was fish it down with that, which that's only two feet to the bottom. Let me get my steps to well. That's only two feet down there to the bottom. So fed it through, did the same thing with the tongs, pulled it out, and then I had to go to the basement and drill a hole up through the floor. And we fed the cable through there. And then we ran the cable across to our electrical panel. And then the next thing, I'll show you that in a few minutes in the, in the basement. But um, the next thing we did, we did not hook up at the electrical panel yet. But we did go ahead and install up top the receptacle. And I'm going to show you that real quick. I'm sorry for my hand. But let me climb up the step ladder. And you can see the electrical box. I had to drill a hole through the wall. That's where we first fed the wire in and left enough wire out. Wired it into a metal electrical box that you can see there. The electrical box is mounted solid to the back of the cabinet. Installed a receptacle and put the cover on. Oh, Alexa, stop. Sure, I Alexa's trying to talk to me. She's trying to give me instructions. But anyway, 
that's what we've done so far. I'm gonna take you down in the basement, show you how I put the wire in uh, across the basement. And then next step after that, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do to install the microwave in this spot. We've got the microwave unboxed and it's sitting over on the couch where it's safe with Tammy. And my guard cat is guarding the microwave to make sure nobody uses it. That's Mickey. Say hi, Mickey. Say hello to everybody. Say hello. Yeah, we say hello to you. <laughs> hi. So anyway, we're going to go to the basement. Say bye. You're going to sleep. All right. We'll take you to the basement. See you. All right, guys, I'm back. We're uh, in the basement. There's the crusher. I'm not going to name it the crusher. Uh, I've been trying to think of a good creative name. It's my new Honda Ridgeline. We've only got 7,000 miles on it, but I think because the color is cement, I think I'm just going to call it the rock. That's a good name for it. But you guys can complain about my disorganized garage if you want, but we got so many things. There's our e-bikes, our two motorcycles. Uh, I did have to move the motorcycles out to install the uh, cable. The electrical wire but you can probably see up here that is the hole where the electrical wire came through the yellow wire um we were fortunate that when when we remodeled our kitchen we moved our oven and because we were dealing with 220 we uh hired an electrician to come in and put the 220 in so right there is where you saw earlier the outlet for the stove and they ran the wire over to my electrical panel and hooked it up to the breaker box. And I was fortunate with that hole there. I just measured how far I had to be to drill the hole for this. So I drilled the hole, put in several of these little um, cable clamps. I, those are nail in type. As we went across the garage and pardon me for the light there, the LED light, but I basically followed their pattern. Like say I had to move the motorcycles out, but I just took it over to the electrical panel and i've got all the excess wire here i haven't hooked it up yet we do have a blank when the electricians were here we're fortunate that we have a blank spot in this electrical box which my door doesn't like to work but this spot is blank so we just bought a 20 amp uh two gang breaker that we're, well it's actually one gang but it's double space and this is blank so we're just gonna pull this breaker out because it's the wrong amperage. And we're gonna put the new breaker in, hook up this wire. We're gonna run it through the side here on one of the knockouts, put our cable relief on there so it doesn't scratch or drag on the metal or anything like that and keeps tension up down and run it to the breaker. Of course, we'll have the, the main off and all that good stuff. So we'll be safe about that. And um, that's what we had to do in the garage. But we're very fortunate that our house is on a, on a basement garage. Through that door right there, half of our basement is finished. So it's carpeted, has drywall, all those things. We've got a craft room and my music room is there. And then we have a large family room that runs from this wall all the way across to that wall. And it's probably about... 16 foot that way and i think that width there is 28 so it's a it's a good size great room or family room whatever you want to call it but uh yep there's the wire i ran it uh right through there right over here this was a little bit of a, a mess to get up and nail the wire to uh the top up here because you're dealing with your guide uh rail for your uh door for your garage door but anyway there's the blue beast and and my motorcycle and our two e-bikes so let's get back upstairs and talk about installing the microwave itself now that we've got that done all right guys back from the basement back from cosmo we have our microwave oven that we've unboxed or as they call it in certain countries the horno d Microdonis, <laughs> de horno, de microdonis. So I guess that means 
microwave oven, microwave of horn oven, whatever it is. Anyway, uh, modern microwaves that are installed under cabinets. Whoa, slow the pan, baby. Oh, I'm going too fast. I'm panning too fast. Modern microwaves that are mounted under cabinets are secured in two places. Number one, they're secured through the top of this cat or the bottom of this cabinet right here. And you have to have several holes and a screw goes down through the top and comes through and hooks into the top of the microwave. And I think this microwave, if I'm not mistaken, on the top has three, three holes where those screws go. And I think I'm not gonna be able to show you those because they're covered. Nope, here's one, here's the second, and here's the third. So how do you line all that up? Well, the cool thing is they include a template. And here is the top cabinet template that I have to work with. So I've got to get under the cabinet, tape this up, and drill me some pilot holes because I've got to put this screw, this screw, and this screw. Now in my supreme intelligence, I did not know they also included the spot where you're supposed to put the plug in. Well, I had already measured just from looking at the microwave and went ahead and drilled that hole. You can see that little bit of light coming through. And I put the template up there and I'm, I'm really close. And fortunately, because I have this lip under my cabinet, this gap from the bottom edge to the bottom of the floor of the cabinet, being off there is not gonna matter too much. But I have to be pretty accurate with the, with the uh, other three mounting screws. So that's the first place they mount. Then the second place is, there is a bar, a metal bar like this that goes somewhere along here. And you have to screw that into studs. That's why all those little screws are there. And if you watched our live, I already marked, marked the studs. You see a little green dot or V and that one. And there's one over here. So I know where my studs are. So all I've got to do is use the back mounting template, which they include. And I'm going to pan very slowly, so I'm going to talk very slowly. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I also have what is called the plantilla de pared posterior, or the rear wall template. And plantilla de pared posterior. So, if you know Spanish, no entrada el Pablo posterior. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just kidding, guys. Uh, I don't know Spanish. I'm just inferring things. So my next thing is to put this template on the wall, find out the location of where that mounting bracket goes and secure it, at least with three screws, as they show, to the studs. And essentially, this mounting bracket has four tabs, as you can see. Two, three, and four. And when this is mounted, the underside of the microwave has a lip that goes over these tabs. So the microwave essentially hooks onto this mounting bracket. That takes that weight, and then you've also got the three screws that are up at the top that hold it from the top. So that is how modern microwaves are attached. So let me get to making some holes in the wall and then maybe even putting the mountain bracket in and then we'll come right back. All right, gang, we are back. We have the mounting bracket in place. That was fairly straightforward. It was a little pain. Um, I have three silver top screws, as you can see. Those are molly bolts. If you've ever dealt with molly bolts, you know how big of a pain they can be. But those are large molly bolts. Had to drill 5 8 inch holes for those. Um, and then where my stud was, I put 
two screws here. And then my other stud is over here. But if you trace this up, actually this stud was over a little bit. It was off by one inch, this mark, because my stud finder was inaccurate. But if you, this is where the actual stud is. If you trace it up, there was no pre-drilled hole. So I had to actually drill a hole into this metal so I could put the uh, third wood screw. So we've got three wood screws and three molly bolts. They recommend at least the three molly bolts and two wood screws. And they only include one screw with their kit. So anyway, that was no big deal. And then we drilled the holes using the template for the three screws that mount through the cabinet. And of course the cabinet is mounted to the studs. As you can see the screws up there. And there's the electrical box. The next step is the heavy list lifting. We're going to have to uh, hoist it up. You hoist it up first. Tilt it forward like this. Okay. The Set. next step is something you don't know. You have to um, take this off because you're okay. So there's a motor. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot you about have to that. Change this around if you're going to use a ventless system. Yeah. It can't be pointed upward like this in yeah, installation. There's, there's instructions. We got to do that before we mount it. So right. we're going to work on the fan real quick, and get it set correctly, and then uh, we're going to mount it. But as I was saying, the mounting requires you to lift the microwave up, tilt it out this way, set it over and onto the tabs. And once it's held back there, somebody has to hold it up while someone goes up top and screws these three screws in. So there you go. Let's get to work on the fan and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got the uh, vent done correctly i think this uh unit here is your blower and with these microwave that you install over your stove under your cabinets you can vent through the top this way you can vent through the back this way or you can do it non-vented which just recirculates through a carbon filter and we're we're not going to fool with all the vents uh, because you have to do extra holes in your cabinets. You have to find a way to vent it through through your house. And although we got a fireplace back there, we'd have to tie the vent in to the flue of the fireplace or something. It's just way too much work. It's much easier to configure this for um, doing it um, non-vented. And basically, underneath this are two fans that blow or pull air. And the way it was configured, it was configured to either blow from to the top or to the back. And you can remove some of these panels for your venting configuration. But basically what we had to do was, since it was configured to take air this way, in order to do the non-vented, the air has to go back through the unit and through this vent. So we had to lift the fan motor up and rotate it. 90 degrees this way so that instead of blowing up in this way or out the back in this direction it blows in that direction so it's going to go through here we installed a carbon filter underneath here and then you take this plate and cover the holes up and that's what we've done so the next step is just lifting it in place and mounting it so i'm going to charge the phone for a few minutes and we'll get back to that as soon as we can all right folks we got uh Pretty much everything done. Microwave is installed. We got the power done. I am not gonna go into all the details of the power installation, number one, because this is electrical work and I'm not a certified electrician. <clears throat> I did, however, contact and consult with my uh, good buddy who is a certified electrician. He, uh, has several years he's working as an industrial electrician now for a large uh, aggregate manufacturing company and used to live with me for a couple of years and good buddy <clears throat> so we got on the phone uh kind of facetime and texting and he walked me through every single step i would recommend any type of electrical work you're gonna either have it done by a qualified electrician or have one on standby for consultation but uh 
folks on YouTube will say it's easy to do it, do it yourself, but it is highly dangerous. A um, couple of issues you might have. Let me get in the frame here. A um, couple of problems you might have. This this line is my power main that comes in from the uh, power company, and it is 240 volts. It goes in the top here, and there's three lines. There's uh, two on each side that feed each line of the power panel, and then one in the center. And the two, the way I understand it, the two on the outside are your neutrals, and the center one is your hot super hot wire but uh it's i may not be saying that exactly right i don't know for sure but anyway once you cut the power to your breaker your main everything on this these two terminals are dead so there's no electricity but you've still got these exposed connections up here that are still live you've still got 240 volts coming in right here in the top behind this panel. Um, <clears throat> the only way to stop that is contact the power company to pull the power at the main outside, however they do that, whether it's a switch or whatever they do, pull the fuse, whatever the case may be. But typically in some residential areas, once power company has to do that, then technically you're supposed to have permit to do any type of work. So. That is a concern, but you don't have to do this. You are allowed to to cut your own main anytime you want. Um, in case you have an emergency, in case you, let's say you just want to change light bulbs and are scared of electricity, you can kill your main and change a light bulb. So that's what we did. We killed the main. We took the old breaker here that was not being used. We put in a 120 volt, 20 amp square D breaker that fits this panel box. Each panel box has different type of breakers that fit them. Um, <clears throat> and then basically the yellow wire that I showed you, we snaked across the garage. We brought it into the panel box here with the strain, cable strain connector. Basically this takes any flex off of the cable because it tightens it down, it clamps it down, but it also prevents the cable from sliding in in and out of this metal. You can see these these are called knockouts. You just take a screwdriver and a hammer and just tap, and this hole will open up. Well, that's what I did. I popped that out, put this in. This secures inside with a nut on the inside of this, and ran the wire through, tightened everything down. Then we basically stripped this yellow off of the wire, and you've got your three wires. You've got a ground, a neutral, and a hot. And then the ground, this box is, is what they call bonded. So your ground and your neutral wires are hooked together. So they go up here on the top. There's two strips, one here and one over here. And there's slots in there where you, you put in your, it's just a hole with a screw. You slide the two wires through the hot I'm sorry, the neutral and the ground, and then you screw them down with the screw and they clamp together. Then your black wire or your hot wire goes, there's a screw on the back of this fuse. It just fits into there. There's a slot for it. You screw it down, and then you just push this breaker into place. There's clamps on the back, and it clamps into your terminal box. And once all that work is done, making sure all your connections are good and tight because the loose connection will start shorting if it's not connected good it'll that wire can wiggle and short and it can cause arc and it can cause corrosion and all kinds of problems so all your connections had to be tight but once we did that we um uh, of course put the cover back on and we turned the main back on put the panel box door and cover back on and like i said yesterday this door my two little nipples that were on the edge broke off and it doesn't fit on this hinge anymore but we'll look into maybe getting a new panel box cover um with a functional door but that was that was the work down here um tammy went up she plugged the microwave in after we turned 
all the switches on and everything came on just fine. Of course, before I did, I sent pictures of everything back to my electrician buddy and he reviewed everything before I turned anything on and he said everything looked good to him and I'd followed his instructions to the T. So we felt comfortable turning the power on and the microwave came on. So that's what I'm gonna go show you now is the microwave install, show you that it actually works and then we'll conclude this how-to video. Hi right, guys, here we are. Microwave is working, time, power's on. Open the microwave. There you go, a little light's working. Everything's working. This is not just a microwave. It is a air fryer, air fryer convection type deal. It's really neat, it's got all your cooking guides here. All these things. Um, I meant to mention this is the uh, model number, serial number, all those things. If you want to look this particular model up, but it is a, <coughs> excuse me, really nice, super nice, pretty expensive microwave. Um, we went for really nice appliances this time around. Uh, if we didn't get a new house, which we didn't, we got a house that was built in 1984. We wanted to have at least new appliances and new cabinets. So it was manufactured June 2022, which is about the time we probably bought it. <laughs> no, no, I don't remember. I think we bought it. Yeah, probably about that time. And it's been sitting over in the corner ever since because we have just been doing cabinets and everything else. But um, it's got the hidden door handle back here. It has uh, nice little LED lights underneath. It's got two... Uh, high and low setting and we put the back rail on the stove today and the next steps we have to do is we have the one outlet that's behind this cabinet that we want to move up to here so you can have an outlet above the counter and then after that we can secure the cabinets to the wall do the final setting of the stove secure the countertops to the cabinets and then we'll do our tile for our backsplash which we've already did everything on the other side of the kitchen right yeah and then the next couple steps we've got to finish this is to paint and do some tiling over there on that side behind the, the baseboard trim. behind the uh, underneath cabinets and then we've got baseboards. There's all my wood to put the baseboards in. And then we've got a extra closet that's over there and we're gonna turn that into an appliance garage. We uh, continued the flooring into there and it's all ready just to put up some shelves and we'll just put our appliances we don't use so often in there like Instapot, blenders, crock pots, things like that. And take them out of our pantry. And get them out of our pantry because our pantry is over here and it has a bunch of stuff in the floor. Um, as you can see, we've got that uh, toaster oven, a three well crock pot, some other stuff laying in there in boxes. But we put up these shelves when we first moved into the house to put spices and things like that. We put some on each side to give us more storage for this pantry. Um, but once we get the baseboards paint, backsplash, and finish this side up, the kitchen will be pretty much done. But we have, we have a lot of room left now since we reconfigured. And once we get our appliances off of the counter, and of course we've got construction debris and everything else on the counter right now because it's a construction zone. But that microwave that's sitting right there is, it's an air fryer too, but our stove is an air fryer as well. So we obviously like air fryers. Yeah, so we obviously like air frying. But we don't really want to have the extra one that sit on, sits on top of the counter because it just takes up so much space. 
yeah, that thing is nice. We bought it. Uh, it's a Power XL. Haven't had any problems. It's a it's a microwave and air fryer combination. Um, it'll do microwave, air fry, and bake. And we bought that. I don't remember. It wasn't over maybe 150 bucks at Costco a couple years ago. Yeah, it does fried or bake baked chicken, air frying chicken nuggets. Gets them really nice and crisp. Really great. We we recommend that brand, but uh, because we bought the over the counter does the same things, we're just going to move this to the basement. And because we have limited counter space. Yeah, we have, do have limited counter space because, as I said, we took took the island out here, or the peninsula that was across here. But there wasn't a ton of counter space there. We simply took that granite and made these two slabs, this one and, and that one. We had a, a granite contractor come out and he cut cut it and and uh, smoothed it and did everything like that, put the edges it on it. Cost, what, about $300 or $200, was it $300 or $200? It was right around $250. To do that work and save the granite, we didn't have to buy more granite or have mismatching granite and have to redo the whole kitchen. So it was really. Wanted white, uh, what's the other well, come in here and talk, baby. They can't hear you oh, from there. We wanted quartz, and we decided we can do quartz, but we'll do it later, mm -hmm. as long as we stay in this house longer. But for the time being, to keep the cost down, we wanted to just uh, go and recycle the count granite and. We made it work um, for us, but we still have limited counter space. But once we get all this junk off here and and move this uh, air fryer microwave downstairs, we're going to have a lot more counter space. But we have so much room from here to there that we could put a small island in here with a different work workspace. It you're not going to match that granite. But we could put a whole butcher block uh, island in there or something. And we were thinking about putting some sort of cabinetry right here in this space because it's just, a, you know, empty space here. But we yeah. do have this, yeah, this awkward gotta... walking area here. So we'd have to pay attention to that. Yeah, we may have to put like a corner cabinet or something. Either that or just one of those very narrow broom, um, refrigerator cabinets. cabinets. Yeah. That's about this tall or something. Yeah, we'll figure and something another... out there top cabinet we don't know and then we've got all this hallway walk space that we could put a narrow buffet or something like that as well to give you more space or like tammy had an idea today just put a small what was it like a small table of some type console of console table console so we table have a place to set some stuff and just make it like a charging station for stuff or whatever you were talking right. about something like that but or maybe put the charging stuff under the console table or something. Yeah, and I mean, there's if really enough room if you were wanting to do it. And we have an office. Uh, one of our bedrooms is converted to an office. But if you wanted to, you could even just put a desk in there, build in a desk. And, you know, a lot of people put desks in their kitchens for whatever reason. But that would be a good space for that, too. So. But we are so happy with this. I'm so happy that we, we got this finished because it was just something... Him and I, we've been working, we worked on this kitchen, then we got burnt out after a while, and we were like, okay, we got to take a break, and we started doing other things, and y'all know how life just kind of gets away with with you, and, and, you know, you just kind of sometimes need to take a break from stuff. Oh, we yeah, did. and the other, last project, we got to do these lights, too. Yes. So, we're going to do these, we got two of these fluorescents up here that we don't like, and we're going to replace them, and then over in the right in uh, this used to be the breakfast nook we converted it to a family room we got a tv and couch and cut a rocker and a chair and a popcorn machine and a snowball making machine it's not the prettiest furniture guys and the we, kids we the shop discount to get this didn't we we got we yeah, bought yeah. the blue chair in a thrift store um a online estate sale we got that big um dresser that's that's uh, under the TV, which looks kind of cool, and then the rocker over there we got at a thrift store, and this couch we got at an estate, estate sale. Yeah. So there you go, guys. But yeah. we're just putting stuff together um, on a dime. And the kids were here this weekend, so there's a little bit of a mess over there. But oh, and our sense. little um, 
our rug down here, which is um, really nice. We got that um, on an online auction site we wanted. So. Yep, and then we've got a lot of live plants over there right now. But um, yeah, we turned this, this used to be a big, huge breakfast area because the house has a dining room right next to it. Right, right. It's, it's just a dome layout. Here, right, right the in there on. is our now, dining room. Now, pardon us. Um, pardon our dust. I kind of um, haven't taken my uh, dishes china. from my, my china out to put in my china cabinets throughout our house. We have a few china cabinets, and, and they're all still in boxes here like we're moving in. But um, but we've got an eight-seater dining room table in there. There, right. There's the inspector. That's very nice. So... <clears throat> Anyway, we didn't need all this dining space for a breakfast area. We just decided this would be a great family room. Plus, as I mentioned yesterday on the video, this, where all this is, was just a wall. Right. And there was an island here with the cooktop. So you were standing here cooking on the cooktop, and it had very little granite on each side. So it wasn't really a real functional thing it was and smaller than this, on this wall. and we had our tv there so it was neat if you wanted to uh, watch tv while you were you're cooking, cooking. because or you know, watch cooking shows while you're cooking so that was nice but now when you're in here cooking all you have to do is turn this way right and yeah. there you got a big t screen tv right. over there exactly so you can uh, have your family in here watching tv chilling out while you're cooking and everything's great right so Big open space, but we're going to fill it up probably with an island or something and else. And pardon here. our dust, guys. We were going to get this place uh, clean. Yeah, it we're... It hasn't been clean. It's been disheveled since all of this. Yeah, we're in a rush right before Thanksgiving because we're having Thanksgiving dinner here with the with the kids and their families. And, and we're we're just in that rush to get everything done. So everything's a construction and mess. I left over Halloween just laying over yeah. here on the counter. And, and then a spring... Or a summer thing that I took down to put up the uh, the Halloween stuff in a hurry. So, but what we may do is we may do a tour of our kitchen right before uh, Thanksgiving, so we can show you the progress and show you what it really looks like when everything's put away and, and nice. And eventually, once we go and finish out all the rooms in this house, which don't know when that'll be, but room by room. As we finish, we will definitely give you a tour. All right, well, it's time to get off here. This video is already going to be pretty long, but we hope you watch it. Hope you enjoyed. Yes, if you, thank you. If you watched it and enjoyed, please like, share, and subscribe. And make sure you tell your friends. Tell your friends, tell your friends. Uh, but we appreciate every one of you guys. We pray for you every night. So. And we hope you guys are doing great. And uh, y'all take care. Take it easy. Take the fast way home. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.